Our current Simon effect experiment takes the full set of possible stimuli over a number of repeats and completely randomizes them. In some cases, however, you may wish to add some limits to the randomization and pseudo-randomize the stimuli. One common pseudo-randomization would be to limit the number of stimuli in a row of the exact same color position type. In fact, you may wish to never have the same exact stimulus combination appear twice in a row. There are multiple ways to achieve this. Generally, the simplest way to program a pseudo-randomization that restricts the number of items of a particular type in a row is to shuffle the array of possibilities until you have an order that works. This particular randomization is not very strict and there are many possible stimulus lists that will meet the criterion. Because the randomization still yields a large number of possible combinations, an approach where you shuffle the stimuli until you find a set that meets your criterion will likely work. We can use a subroutine to check stimulus lists and see if they meet our criterion, and a loop to shuffle the array until there is an order that works. The subroutine will return a bool, true if the sequence is OK, or false if it is not. The argument to the subroutine will be the shuffled array. What we want to check is that for each item in our stimulus array, the next item is not exactly the same. To do that, we can use a loop. In this code, we start with the second element in the array and check it against the first. If they are the same, then the sequence is not OK and we return false. We continue in this manner until the last element in the array. If we end up finishing the entire loop without returning false, then the sequence is OK and we return true. Now, when we shuffle our array, we do so in a loop. Notice that this loop does not end until a valid sequence is found. Therefore, it is important that the chances of getting a valid sequence on each try are reasonable. If the restriction is so severe that the fraction of valid sequences among all possible sequences is minuscule, the loop could run for an unreasonably long time. We can now test this and make sure that our criterion is met and that it is generated very quickly. The subroutine we have currently made to check the sequence is not very flexible. It is really only useful for the criterion we currently have of not having more than one in a row that is the exact same. We can make a more generalized subroutine that will take as an argument how many in a row we are okay with. For example, in some cases we might only disallow three or more in a row, so we will add a new int argument that gives the limit for the maximum number of trial descriptions in a row that may be the same. Then in the loop we will keep track of how many in a row have been the same using an int called in a row. Each time through the loop, the current is compared to the previous subarray, and if they are the same, in a row is incremented. If in a row is ever greater than the max in a row, then there are too many in a row that are the same and false is returned. If we get through the whole loop and don't return false, then the sequence is OK and true is returned. Finally, we have to update where we call the subroutine to include the argument. We can now test this with different values and make sure the criterion is met. Instead of having a concern about the exact same stimulus, both colour and position, we might want to avoid having too many a row of either one colour or one position. In that case, we won't want to check that the entire subarray matches the previous subarray, but will instead want to check for each piece of the subarray separately. To do so, we can use an inner loop to go through each subroutine. 
We will also need an int array instead of the int variable in a row to keep track of the number in a row we've had for each subarray. When we run this, if we keep the same value for max in a row of 2, and if we have many trials, we may find that it takes a while to return a valid sequence. Limiting the maximum number of both time and position in a row to 2 is very limiting and shuffling over and over again will take a while before a valid sequence is found. For example, with the code we currently have, if we set the number of trials per type to 8, and don't show practice trials, you can run and see that there is a noticeable delay before any stimuli are presented. The delay is only a few seconds. That delay is due to the time it takes to shuffle for an acceptable sequence. If we set the number of trials per type to 10, the delay is even longer, in this case over a minute, and might become problematic. There are a number of ways to deal with the issue of a very restrictive randomization. One way would be to decide you could be less restrictive. An easy way to be less restrictive would be to decide that a maximum of three in a row for both colour and position would be okay. Making this simple change, we already see that it is much faster to find a sequence that works, even for ten trials of each type. Instead of just changing the overall restriction though, which may not suit your needs, it might be better to be able to choose the restriction for colour separately from the restriction for position. For example, maybe it would be okay if the position was repeated up to four times in a row, but the colour could only be repeated up to two times in a row. We can change our subroutine to take a different argument for each position in the subarray by giving an array argument to the subroutine. Then, in the inner loop of the subroutine, we compare to the max inner row specifically for that position in the subarray. When we call the subroutine, we will now give an array argument for the limit. To keep straight which item in the subarray denotes the colour of the box and which one denotes the position, we use our colour and position constants. In more complicated randomizations or very limited schemes, the shuffle until you find one that works plan may simply be untenable. For very limited schemes where there are only a few possible allowable combinations, you can generate those combinations elsewhere and then have presentation read in a list using the input file PCL type. In some cases, you may find an algorithm that will work to build your allowable combinations and can program that algorithm in presentation. Going over such cases is outside the scope of these tutorials.